Power of the Future project is basically a thousand days in the planning. We started this in 2009. We had the team sign off at the end of 2009. We released it to the media in 2010. And now, in 2011, we've got about 400 days before we start 2013 season commencement. There's been a huge amount of planning with the Car of the Future project. We considered where we've been in terms of the legends, the teams, the drivers, the sorts of cars that have been used over the last 50 years. 50 years of touring car racing or van supercar racing in this country has brought plenty of manufacturers. Not many people even know that in 1986, for instance, Volvo won the Australian Touring Car Championship with Robbie Francovic. As you can see, so many of these manufacturers have been part of the culture of Australian motorsport. The Bathurst wins of Jaguar, for instance, BMW, Holden, Ford, Mazda. There's been so many manufacturers across this period of time. Nissan Motor Company at the end of 1992. So from 1992, when the rules changed from the old Group A, in 1993, V8 Supercars basis was formed. We purposely pitched those rules between the DTM, very high tech, very high, high cost, and back at NASCAR, where they're obviously very, very costly across the whole year, but they race a lot more often. So the regulations are essentially in the middle of NASCAR and DTM, and they have worked very well for us. Almost 19 years now of V8 Supercar racing. We also looked very closely at the cost to be competitive. In 1994, we won the championship. It cost us $4 million. In 2008, when we started this plan for the 2009 board briefing, obviously, we got right up to near $8 million to win the series today. So there's been lots of landscape changes and lots of things that have been uh, considered as part of Car of the Future. One of the biggest things about Car of the Future and the cost basis is how does that work with the economy and how does it work with the Australian automotive car market. So the automotive market in 1993 was a much different place than it is today. Ford and Holden had roughly 45% of the local car market. Today the landscape has moved a lot and clearly now Ford and Holden combined have similar market share to Toyota. So when we thought about Car of the Future and establishing a sustainable, future-proof sport, we had to think about how that interrelates with the car market. And the reality is we've got to look outside of just Ford and Holden for the future of this business.